quickly sold out. It's available here from midnight tonight. Joe Andrews reports. Tonight, as Candle in the Wind goes on sale in Britain, there are already a record 8 million advance orders from around the world. Everyone in the music industry believes that this single will take just a few hours to reach number one in the charts, and they're certain that it will be the most successful the world has ever seen. And to do that, it will need to sell more than 30 million copies to beat the record held by Bing Crosby's White Christmas. This factory will work overnight as part of the effort the music business is making to get the song into the shops and raising money just a week after it was first heard. And it seems to me you've lived your life like a candle in the wind. In France, where the single went on sale first in the world today, a store just 10 minutes from where the accident happened sold out in hours. In London, as volunteers continued collecting up tributes laid in the parks, St James's Palace said, The princes will eventually see the letters and messages. It will take months, but we will reply to everyone. The princes want to say a sincere thank you. And to give the single a good send-off, radio stations around the world played it simultaneously earlier this evening. Goodbye, England's rose. May you ever grow. Joe Andrews, News at 10. More news to come tonight, including BA strike a deal, but was the multi-millions of people have been queuing to pay respects. And there was a last-minute crush when police closed the church where she's lying in state. From Calcutta, our Asia correspondent Mark Austin reports. Calcutta's monsoon rains couldn't keep them away today. The final chance for the people of India to be close to the woman they simply call mother. The Indian Army have draped the national flag over her body in preparation for tomorrow's funeral. But as her nuns continue their vigil in St. Thomas's Church, everyone, it seems, wants a last look at the missionary who touched so many lives here. In an indoor stadium where the funeral service will take place, rehearsals and final preparations are being hurriedly completed. It's a full state funeral for a champion of the poor, and say those close to her, Mother Teresa, would be embarrassed by all the fuss. I think she would be both smiling, appreciative and saying, not for me. But it is for her, all the flowers, the tributes and all the tears. No, 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 no. No. And when the authorities announced they'd soon be closing the doors of the church where Mother Teresa is lying in state, thousands still queuing had to be held back by police. And so tonight, India is set for what promises to be the biggest funeral here since Mahatma Gandhi's nearly 50 years ago. Tomorrow, royalty and political leaders will rub shoulders with lepers and the destitute as the world says goodbye to one of the great humanitarians of the century. Mark Austin, News at 10, Calcutta. For tonight's special report, we return to the funds being raised in memory of the Princess of Wales. Her death has led to an overwhelming number of donations to the trust set up in her name. Thousands of cheques are being received every day. So now the question is, what to do with all the money? Richard Lindley has been canvassing opinion. I am in love with the world with its spies and its in North London, a theatre company of children with every kind of ability and disability rehearse a favourite song. It'll be one of several on a music industry record raising money for the Princess of Wales Fund. And that's due to a letter written by a nine-year-old cast member. Princess Diana helped us so much and we will miss her. Can we make a record to get money for all the people she tried to help? The princess was a patron of the company and came to see its shows because they included those who could so easily have been shut out. We like did the same as her. We, we didn't look for what people can't do. We always looked inside them for what they can do. Diana's personal involvement has left her favourite charities a legacy worth more than money. 
when uh, she first touched someone with HIV, that was a major revelation around the world. I think all of the fears and the taboos about how you transmit HIV suddenly disappeared. I think we feel a tremendous responsibility to keep the causes, the passions, her interests, and the things she believed in alive. And we hope that uh, from any funds that we get from the Memorial Fund, that that's what we will be able to do. Diana's death has led to an outpouring of money as well as emotion that leaves the sums we usually give to charity way behind. Last year, Comic Relief raised £17 million, saved the children £33 million, and the British Heart Foundation £57 million. Oxfam raised the most, £92 million. Though the trustees say it's too early to predict, the Princess's Fund could raise even more. I think it's because she seemed to touch everybody, didn't she? Everybody seemed to think she was their friend. And we're raising money in school as well, aren't we, for the fund? Yeah, we've got and to. And I think everyone just wants to be part of the yeah. huge amount that's coming in. What would she like it to be spent on? Um, obviously, she'd like it to be spent on the people and the people that need it. But some charities worry that money that would have come to them will now go to Diana's fund and won't come back. Now I look at it as being the the people's pound for the people's princess. We obviously have some concerns based on the fact that the criteria has not been established yet. And with a lot of organisations fighting for the same pot of gold these days, it's going to be very difficult. Goodbye, rules. Elton John's new version of Candle in the Wind is bound to be one of the biggest contributors to Diana's fund. 200,000 of these CDs will be in the shops tomorrow. They won't be nearly enough. Back in the 80s, the Band-Aid record sold three and a half million copies in Britain alone. Elton John's tribute to Diana could do the same in a country that's still, in the words of his song, lost without your soul. Checks sent directly to the fund are being processed now. Tonight alone, more than 8,000 of them. The people want Diana's work to go on. Richard Lindley, News at 10, in the city. Greg Rosetsky is celebrating tonight after becoming Britain's first male tennis player to be placed in the world's top. For years, this building was preserved for the role, but an overlooking hill poses a terrorist threat. The new sign here, rather premature. The Royal High School is simply too old-fashioned and would require extensive renovation. It is virtually out of the running. Now there is thought to be a new front runner. It's this empty site in Edinburgh's old Docklands. A special building would be created here for the new parliament. It could be similar to the nearby Scottish office. And there was a rainbow here today. Nature seems to favour the site. But the £40 million building costs will be met by the people. It's got to look good just like Westminster does. Can't be secondary. Something round so that um, they don't confront, e confront each other on opposite sides of the house. Whichever style is chosen, the Parliament will challenge this image of Princess Street as a symbol not just of a city, but of Scotland. Linda Kennedy, News at 10, Edinburgh. And that's the way the news looks tonight, at the end of a momentous day in Scotland's history. From London, and from all of us here in Edinburgh, good night. Plenty of weather on the way for this.